Shalom and good morning, everyone. Ariel Bart Sadok here from the Kosher Torah School, found online at koshertorah.com. Bringing to you today's lesson in the Sefer Yitzira, today's lesson seven in our daily course, which of course we are dedicating uh, to our world today with our prayers for uh, health, safety, well being. And of course, recovery for all those who are facing illness at this time. God's blessings be upon us all. With that note, let us delve right into our text. For those of you following with this course sequentially, you know in our previous classes, we were discussing what the text of the Sefer Yitzira opens and calls 32 wondrous paths of wisdom. And following Rabbi Chaim Vital, our commentator, we've been describing these within a context of what we call the sefirot, which are the, you see how I'm pausing here, this is not a mistake, it's to really think about what's the right way to say it. In Talmudic times, it says that God created the world with ten sayings, amiran, and Rabbi Chaim uses that term to describe sefirot. And the word sefira actually means accounting or like numbers, like the word mispar. So when we, at the end of this Mishnah, speak of the creation with three books, we have again Sefer, Sapar, and Sipor. We'll discuss that in an upcoming lesson. But it's the same root as the word Sephira. So mispar number, Sefer book, Sephira can also mean counting. We refer to Sephira in Kabbalah, as the levels of divine manifestation in creation. And I think it's important that we understand what that is, because unfortunately, many of us have a mythology when it comes to our understanding of God and the spiritual realm. Now, remember this about human imagination. Human imagination can go anywhere, create anything in any size, shape, and form. Our modern entertainment industry for the last century or more has been built upon this. We have created in movies, in novels, television, of course, um, complete alternate worlds, realities, <coughs> lives going literally generation after generation after generation. Many of you, of course, are familiar with the famous what started as a television program, Star Trek. You know, Captain Kirk and, and, you know, Mr. Spock and all the rest. And it started as a small, simple idea in the mind of a single man. And it was flushed out just for the television show. Look at it today, 50 years later. How it has exploded out into its own creation, its own world, its own universe, dating back generations and generations in this fantasy. Star Wars is another example. The Harry Potter story is another example. We know a whole bunch, right? You can think of probably more than I. But when it comes to God, the spiritual realm, fantasy has flushed things out in such ways which are expression of the individual's personal religious perspective. In other words, their personal imagination, just like the writers and authors of all the different movies and stories and books we have. So when you have Christian writers, more of the Catholic orientation, who want to describe the horrors of hell, you'll have people like Dante who will write his famous book Inferno and the Light, which describes all this horrible, horrible stuff, which unfortunately... People who do not know spiritual reality will embrace the imaginations of this author and accept it as real. That's just one example. Modern day Jews, evangelicals, we all embrace all kinds of fantasies which are not valid, even though in our minds they are. Now, when it comes to understanding God, we're all doing this. Essentially, we are, believe it or not, violating the commandment. Don't put an image upon God's face. Thinking of God as something that he's not. Even to think of God as a he, even though the Bible uses that pronoun, isn't as fully accurate as this understanding of God is. You know, in our kosher Torah school here, 
I endeavor to follow the old prophetic paths of experiential spirituality. It's not enough that you know what the words in the book say. You have to understand what they mean. Here, we have a simple word like sephira, all right? And here we are elaborating on this. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm confusing you by saying that the sephira is a divine manifestation of God, nothing more. Yeah, but it's related to the word book. It's related to the words storytelling. It's related to the word for number, right? It's related to a whole bunch of things. What does that all mean? You see, we're not using the imagination in a proper focus to understand these things. And this is where mistakes of the intellect come in and mess us up. Now, we're in a global crisis right now. We all know that. And people look towards this time, again, through the perspective, like the rose-colored glasses, if you remember the metaphor, of their own personal religious convictions. So, why is the world right now in crisis? Well, those of certain religious orientations are going to say, because the world is full of sinners, and you all deserve to die. So good for you that you're sick. Oh, I'm sorry, I kind of think that kind of attitude's a little sick. Um, this is not what it's all about. You and I both do not know the will and the word and the way of God. All we know is what we have in front of us. And we endeavor to connect with the universe, with the hand of God, the Shekhinah as we call it, to understand the way. And one of the, this is the prophetic way, and I teach this in my prophetic courses. If you want my courses, go to koshator.com. Right on the top, you'll see a little link there. It says courses. Click and you'll see all the courses, dozens of them, with full class-by-class -class descriptions so you know exactly what's in it. Okay? If you're interested, learn. Experience for yourselves. But for right here, right now, we're dealing with this text <clears throat> 32 wondrous paths of wisdom. We describe the 32, the 22 letters. The 10 sephirot were like the soul within the body of those letters. And then the text goes back <clears throat> and makes some long names of God. The 32 wondrous paths of wisdom were engraved. We describe that word, hakika, by Yudke, Yehavayat Sipaot, and it says God of Israel, the living God, King of the universe. There's all this list of names. And what are all these lists of names telling us? Um, there's certainly not a comprehensive list of God's names, but what or why are they there? And you should know, in certain older versions of the Sefi Yitzira text, the names themselves, there are different orders, different versions of the text. It's not to argue and debate which one's right or wrong. That's irrelevant. But to try to understand what it's all about. To help us as it applies, not to what's out there in the world. I mean, again, we can use the human imagination to think about God and heaven in any way we want. How about instead going within and recognizing the nature from within us? There's a verse in the book of Job that says, from my flesh will I gaze upon God. The Kabbalists always use this as their point of reference to say, everything we talk about out in the outer world exists within ourselves. And this is very important to understand here because Rabbi Haim Vital is referring to the creation of the heavens and the earth. You remember the heavens created in six days, earth and, you know, Seventh day is, is actually uh, the Sabbath. So you have the six and the one. Well, these correspond to the patterns of the sefirot. And the seven lower sefirot, six are considered male. The one, the seventh, corresponding to Shabbat, is female. That's the physical world. The physical world is female. The presence of God in the Ark of the Covenant, like we said, female. Okay. But the six is za, Zeranpin, the small face of God. What is that? That is that reflection of God that we as human beings see. Essentially, that is the higher human self. Now, this is a very profound point that is made in the Kabbalah. It's actually emanating from a reflection of what's written in the Talmud. All human souls come from a single source. All right. In the Kabbalah, they say we are all part of collective Adam. That Adam, Adam and Eve, remember from the Bible, 
Adam was a metaphor for all the collective souls of humanity. And all souls, and we've discussed this in many other places, we call them human souls. Okay, that's our word to describe. That's our adjective, human souls. But what a human soul actually is, is a sentient, conscious, higher thinking entity of a certain type. And these types of souls, we understand them when they incarnate in our physical bodies as homo sapiens, sapien human beings. But they, these souls, can incarnate in bodies anywhere and everywhere in time and space and other planets and everything else. So when we go out and meet E.T. one of these days, don't be surprised if they're just like us. But that's another story for another time. Go read my book, Aliens, Angels and Demons. I talk about that a lot. But okay, getting back to these names of God. Why are they here? They are here because being that we are Ze'arampin, we, that is our higher self. The six sefirot correspond to the inner dynamics of human emotional domains, which is the higher realm of our individual sub and unconscious. And above that, we have the domain of mind, thought. That is what's referred to as the sefirot of the Keter, the Chokhmah, and the Bina, or as we know them as the original essence. The revelation of that essence is intuition, and the comprehension of that intuition in intellectual thought. We say that's exactly how the universe itself was created, and that is how we ourselves are formed. So this is what's reflected in the names of God here in this portion of our Safi Yitzhira. And I'm going to read to you. Halev Nitivot Hochma mit labeshim bebina. The 32 wondrous paths of wisdom are cloaked within bina, which is the intellectual mind. This is the secret of the 32 mentions of the name of Elohim in the creation story. And that's why the first of the names here is Elohim, Chaim, and Melech Olam, the living God, king of the world. Because that force which brought forth creation was not an arbitrary, mindless thought. If you think about the statement made by atheism today, it is a greater jump or leap in faith than anything any religion has ever said. In Western religions, we say there is a God and he created the heavens and the earth. Okay, that's a statement. How do you prove it or disprove it? I don't know. But in atheism, they say everything exists because you can't deny that. But there's no purpose behind it. Everything came into existence for absolutely no reason, with no cause, with no purpose, with no anything. Little they realize that they're contradicting fundamental laws of you know thermodynamics, where in which you know a complicated system by nature seeks to simplify itself, and they're seeing that existence came about in an absolute contradiction of that. That something that was completely nothing, for no reason, no direction, no purpose, became everything, from 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 simple to complex. Well, what can you say? So when we look at the world, we look at a living universe. We look at a directed and guided universe. And we seek the understanding of these things. So again, we're in this crisis period of viral infection. People are dying. And we're looking at the global government response, a precedent of which I don't ever remember seeing not, not only in my lifetime, but in, ever. There's a reason for all of this. Just like the Bible says, there's a time and a purpose and a place for all things under heaven. And while many people want to look towards these things as negatives, we say, no, the living God, the king of the universe, is in charge of it all. Seek out the silver linings. In the worst of times, Seek out what's best in them. We do not have to have pressured and hard times turn us into ravaging animals. We've had all that throughout human history. We don't need that. We need to remember that we are created in the image of God, in the image of these sefirot. They're not out there in some theoretical world. They are inside 
us. So when you go looking for God, don't go looking for God somewhere out there. Don't go looking for God in the pages of a book. Recognize that the sefirot are within us. The image of God is within us. There's a very deep meditation on this called the Kavana of the Merkaba. I have courses on this. I've taught it in great depth in my book, Walking on the Fire. I have lessons on this on my YouTube page if you want to go check that out. These are practical exercises, how you can put these things into practice to help open your mind, your heart, to experience the times, the trials that we're going through right now and to accomplish great things out of it. Instead of looking at these times as being an obstacle, look at them as being an opportunity. We're all facing financial insecurity. Remember, our, our school, we, 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 we live on charity. <laughs> what you guys give us is all we have. That's the way it is. And if you guys suffer, we suffer. But you know something? God is good. Somehow, some way, we'll manage. We always do. And I believe that. So I have faith in that power of God. Continuing. Our text states here. All right. El Shaddai. What is this name? El Shaddai. He says, Be'et olam yonek memenu. Whenever the world, that which is created out of the seven sefirot, is receiving from the higher dimensional planes, which again, we refer to as the Sifirot of Bina and Chokhmah, the higher worlds called Beria and Atzilut, that suckling comes down. He says, this is the secret of the, of, of the verse, Bein Shaddai between the breasts. The word Shaddai is also the breasts of which a child suckles from. A big Kabbalah secret, nap another time. El Shaddai. The word El, Aleph Lamed, is the numerical value of 31. Aleph 1, 30 is the Lamed. And if you look at the name of God, Yud, He, Vav, and He, that corresponds to the Sefirot Bina, the realm of Beria, because you have the name Yud, Ke, Vav, Ke, in four different spellings, 72, 63, 45, 52. Go into my books, all the teachings are there if you need that, if you don't know this. Well, the spelling of God, God's name, Yud, Ke, Vav, Ke, when it's expanded out into the numerical value of 63, that's Yud, Vav, Dalit, He, Yud, Vav, Aleph, Vav, He, Yud. Take away the original Yud, K Vav, K, which is 26, and you're left with 31. Okay? You have a Vav and a Dalit inside the Yud. You have a Yud inside the He. You have an Aleph and a Vav inside the Vav, and a Yud, all up, 31. So this is the secret of the name El, which is concealed within the name Sag. This is all Kabbalah speak for saying the revelation and emanation of that which we call the creator to the creation. This is not a patriarchal myth. This is like the mother who brought forth creation. Again, creation comes to us from the world called Biria, the name Elohim, the Sefirat Bina, all of this is feminine. Yeah, I know the name Elohim has a male ending to it, but it's applied to all the feminine aspects. So maybe we should read Genesis as, in the beginning, God birthed the heavens and the earth. That's a proper way of understanding. What was given birth? Zeranpin, Za. Everything together. And that is the great whole and the purpose of our understanding. Rahum Vehanun, all right, in the next names. This refers to Zerampin, who again is sent to focus on the Sefirot Teferet, which is the center column. As we know, we have the expansive powers which go out, the restrictive powers which bring in, they have to be balanced in harmony. That is the secret of the small face of God, that place of inner balance, which is our higher selves. And when we connect to that higher self. It usually is through some image in the human mind of fantasy and projected image. Some would call this active imagination in the Abulafian technique. This is the prophetic meditation. And what you connect with is your higher self, your Magid. 
Those are meditative techniques, of course, which we discuss in detail throughout our kosher Torah school. But on that note, see, I've ran out of time today. God be willing, we'll pick this up in our next lesson. So please check out our courses. You have the time now. Invest it wisely in yourselves. God bless. Ariel Barzadok, Kosher Torah School, koshertorah.com. See you next time. Shalom.